Sometimes people don't realize it, especially if it's right in front of them. You know, especially if it's someone that they, for whatever reason, they just don't think about it with that person until, until it just, one day they were just like, oh, wait. When I don't say anything, Lord Chiron takes the time to stretch in a bored fashion. I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, Lord Chiron is definitely straight. He'd never take that sort of interest in me anyway. I don't get any hint of bitterness from the way he says it. My impression is that he genuinely means what he says and that in turn gives me the information I need to come to a conclusion. I don't think you love him. Oh? Care to explain your reasoning? If you loved him, it hurt. You wouldn't be able to just shrug it off the, off the fact that he'll never look your way so easily. Lord Sheeran stares at me curiously, taking a moment to consider my words. At least that's the impression I get before he turns it around on me. Is that what happened to you? You're still a virgin because the person you liked wasn't interested. Poor Marcel. Why do you have to be an A? I was trying to give you a serious answer. And you're the one acting like a virgin, not knowing whether you're in love or not. Honestly, someone like you should be able to figure it out on your own. Someone like me? What's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. No, I don't. It means you fool around often enough that you shouldn't know about that kind of thing. Ah, so in other words, you have the wrong idea about me. How do I have the wrong idea about you? I'm not anywhere near as loose as you seem to think I am. Really now? Because I seem to recall you flirting with Lysia the first time I met you. Uh, I, I don't actually recall that. You told her she was cute. Lord Sanders scolded you for it. Mm, I don't remember that. I... Wait, you told her she was cute. Wait, you told her... Wait, hold on. Really now? Because I seem to recall you flirting with Lycia the first time I met you. Hmm, I don't actually recall that. You told her she was cute. Lord Sanders scolded you for it. Ah, yes, that's right. Well, she is cute, isn't she? I don't see how telling her that makes me a bad guy. Fine. What about the woman in the library? I know you said you weren't going to sleep with her, but you were still messing around. Right, I should have realized you'd bring her up. The thing about her, well, I guess I might as well come clean now that the joke is over. I have a feeling I'm not going to like this. I paid her. What? The girl never worked here in the first place. She was just someone from town who was a bit down on her luck, so I paid her to help me with one of my games. So I never seduced her, and she was never at risk of losing her job. See, I'm not as bad as you thought, huh? I still don't like you. <laughs> I have a headache. So, you... No, you know what? Never mind. I think about it too much. I'll just get angry. Why don't you go back to your other questions then? You know, the ones that don't have answers that make you mad. You had more of those, I trust. I did. Well, what did you want to know? I do have one I'm pretty curious about. Since you're from Grand Tree, did you know Ray or Mirth? Ah, a question about Lauren's com companions. I should have known. I get asked that question quite a lot these days. I don't know either of them that well. I mean, I've seen both of them in person, but I haven't had any interactions with them that you would call significant. I can say this, though. They don't do Mirth justice in the stories. She is dropped gorgeous, and on top of that, she hardly wears anything. An excellent combination, if I do say so myself. He looks a little too pleased with himself. You know, you could take a few pointers from her. I'm fine wearing clothes, thank you very much. Mirth doesn't go completely naked, she wears leaves. Yeah, well, I'm not that comfortable with my body. You should be. I blush a bright red. That line shouldn't have gotten to me, but it kind of did. My uncooperative brain definitely liked the compliment. I try to switch the direction of the conversation before I get even more flustered. What about Ray? You know, if you need a handsome elf to fantasize about there, there is one right there. I roll my eyes. Yes, yes, you're very handsome, I get it. Now, yes, yes, you're very handsome, I get it. Now, can you answer my question? You think I'm handsome? That's not an answer. I'll tell you what. You answer my question, I'll tell you about Ray. I sigh, he knows he's handsome. He shouldn't need me to tell him that. Still not my type. I know he just wants to hear me say it, I just don't want to. I just don't want to. Still, I am curious, so does it really cost me anything to tell him something he already knows? Objectively, he is handsome. No, that's subjective. No. Whether or not someone is beautiful to you or handsome to you is pretty subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Refuse to answer his question. You know what? I'm not that curious after all. Besides, you probably couldn't tell me that much anyway. Lord Shiran sighs. Well, you've got me there. I can't comment on much besides what he looks like. Anything I could tell you would probably be something you'd already heard anyway. It seems I made the right call then. 
Maybe. You've made me very sad, though. He doesn't, he doesn't look very sad. In fact, he's got the same impish grin he always, on he always does. You're not convincing me you're actually sad. I'm crying on the inside. Really, I am. Yeah, sure, whatever. I ask Lord Shiran a few more questions I work. He still occasionally irritates me with some of his answers, but by the end of it, I have to admit, I had an okay time. He's really not so bad when he's just talking. I may actually be able to tolerate him after all. Yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't be able to tolerate him. <laughs> you and I are two different people, Marcel. Ooh, achievement unlocked, Casanova! Eloy is tagging along again today. It's usually not a big deal, but he's followed me to the garden several times in a row. I think Kamal might be getting a little tired of Kamal might be getting tired of him. Well, there's no helping it. I head over to where Kamal is, Eloy and Tao. He's following you around again, huh? I'm afraid so. Kamal looks a little annoyed, but he accepts the situation and nods towards Eloy. I was I wasn't under the impression that you liked being outside, but you've been coming here a lot lately. I'm an elf. I love trees and flowers and grass. Kamal sighs. Just don't cause any trouble. Kamal gets back to work and I follow suit. Eloy watches me from the sidelines patiently for a bit before making a compliment. Before making a complaint. It's hot out here. You're welcome. I go... Well, you're welcome to go inside and cool off. It was just an observation. Eloy goes quiet for a minute or two before speaking up again. I'm bored. Can I help or something? No. No, why not? Because I don't want you to. That was blunt. If you're bored, go back inside and stop bothering Marcel. We don't need you interrupting our work. Eloy grumbles himself before trying again. Come on, I can help. I let out a sigh. I know he's kind of a distraction, but would it really be so bad to let him help? We'll definitely get our work done faster if he just goes inside, but Eloy won't like me suggesting that. Then again, I don't think Kamal would like it if I suggest we just let Eloy help. I don't think I can make them both of them happy. I let another sigh as I try to figure out who I'd rather stay on good terms with for the time being. Kamal or Aloy? Who am I going to prioritize? <laughs> oh, at least, uh, sorry. No, not too much, too much offense to Aloy, but as if there was even a question. Um, tell Aloy to go back inside. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sticking around, having Aloy hang out versus being alone with Kamal? Yeah. Not even a choice. Eloy, just go inside, okay? We can spend time together after I get this done, and honestly, that'll happen a lot faster if you're not here to get in the way. You're not really interested in any of this stuff anyway. Eloy crosses his arm and adopts an annoyed expression. Silly doesn't argue with me. Fine. Don't care. See Eloy. But you'd better make it up to me later. Not a chance. Yeah, that's fine. Besides, Kamal still has to make up, make it up to me somehow at some point, too. Yeah, that's fine. Just go relax or something until I finish up. Eloy sighs and then heads on inside, leaving me alone with Kamal. He seems like a handful. He is. I don't hate him, though. Would you rather spend time with him? I can finish this up by myself or you'd rather work on something indoors. I like spending time with Eloy, but I like spending time with you better. So I'm fine right here. Kamal smiles. Good. Nice. Very nice. Alright. Let's do charm, shopkeepers, shelf books. Charm, shopkeepers, shelf books. Charm, shopkeepers, shelf books. Charm, the shopkeepers. Okay. Relationship to Aloy plus one. Fine, whatever. Relation to George is plus one. Charisma. I need to get to number ten before I get to the next... Whatever. I'm on my way to the kitchen when I come across to Vincent. He initially looks a bit agitated, but he seems to calm down a bit when he sees me. Marcel. Yes? Whatever you're in the middle of can wait. I need you to go upstairs and tell Lord Sandor that one of Lady Rosalind's footmen just arrived. He said that Lady Rosalind is coming. She'll be here in about ten minutes. Anything else? No, that's about it. I do it myself, but I need to get things ready for her arrival. Right, I'm on it. Vincent breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you. 
That said, he hurries off to make whatever preparations need to be made. This Lady Rosalind must not have given him much of a warning if he's worrying like that. I don't think I made the skill check in time. Well, I can alleviate some of Vincent's stress by hurrying up with what he's asked of me. I start up the steps, no internal conflict buzzing in the back of my mind this time. My last conversation with Lord Sander had admittedly ended badly, but at least it had given me the opportunity to figure out where I stand. I'm not going to think of him as my father. He's my employer only, and his personal life is none of my concern. I climb the last three steps and walk down the hallway towards Lord Sanders' room. I knock three times and then wait for him to answer. Is that you, Vincent? It's Marcel, your lordship. There's a moment of silence and start to wonder if, it's actually considering, if he's actually considering ignoring me. When I don't hear an answer, I try to get his attention again. Lord Sander, is everything all right? Everything is fine. Can I come in then? I've got a message for you. Fine, come in. I open the door and head inside, shutting it carefully behind me. Lord Sander is lying in bed as usual. I'm beginning to think he doesn't get too far from it these days. I put that thought aside, knowing that thoughts like these will just lead me to me lead to me sympathizing with him. Lady Rosalind is coming in about ten minutes. Lord Sander grumbles to himself, clearly not surprised pleased with this news. Of course she is. Gods, I was hoping to avoid this encounter at least a bit longer. Lord Sandor adjusts himself on the bed before wincing. He falls back against the bed and takes deep breaths as he gets a handle on the plane, the pain. I think this was an attempt at getting up. I'm not sure though, since he didn't get up very far. Why now? Why of all the days that blasted woman have to pick today? You don't have to get up. I'm sure she'll understand if you don't if you can't get up to meet her. She'll just barge in here if I don't get go to meet her. Is that so bad? You can talk to her just fine from there. I'd rather keep my affliction as secret as possible. I don't think you're going to be able to accomplish that. He groans and tries to get up again with similar results. It's plainly obvious that something is wrong. I think you should stay there if it's causing you that much trouble. And I also think you need to tell Dr. Borges about this. Stuff it. It's none of your business, remember? I cross my arms and roll my eyes. It's not exactly something a proper servant would do, but I can't help it. He's being stupid about this. You're the one who told him, aren't you? Told him what? That I had another coughing fit before we talked. You told Dr. Borges. Yeah, I did. I admit it, okay? How is he supposed to treat you when you don't tell him anything? You're being ridiculous. And for the record, I tell him again in a heartbeat. Lord Sander responds by glaring at me in her silence. I'm definitely not winning any points with him. But so be it. I had to speak my mind. I meet his gaze and we just stare at each other for a long time. Finally, he relents with a sigh. That doesn't matter right now, I suppose. I've got Lady Rosalind to deal with first. I can help you get up if... No, I'll get it by myself. He shuts his eyes and takes a deep breath, working up the energy to try again. When he opens his eyes and slides his feet out from under their covers before placing them on the ground shakily. He tries to stand but falters. I rush forward and catch his arms, though I suppose he would have been able to keep himself from falling by using the nightstand. I'm helping, alright? That's final. You're just going to have to deal with it. Lord Sandor frowns, but doesn't argue further. I hoist him up, expecting him to be much heavier than he actually is. He's disturbingly light, and I can feel his bony structure through his clothes as his body leans against mine for support. I feel like I'm holding onto a skeleton. I think... I think I can manage from here. He says that, but he still seems unsteady on his feet. I have the feeling he'd just get angry if I offered to help him more than I already have, so I don't make the offer. It must feel horrible having to rely on other people for small things like getting up. Lord Sander takes another step deep breath before making his way to the door one slow step at a time. I move ahead of him and hold the door open. I can at least do that much. He makes it to the hall without too much trouble, but stops short at the stairs. He lets out an annoyed groan as he mulls over how he wants to deal with this more challenging problem. I don't want to wound his pride any more than I already have, but I think it'd be better if he had some help. Lord Sander, I can... Just give me a minute. I can do this, I just, I just need a minute. I nod and step back to give him some space. When he decides this time he lowers his foot onto the first step, I bite my lip nervously as he moves to the next one. Oh, going down the stairs. He takes the step slowly, testing his steadiness on each one before taking the next. Using this process, he slowly makes his way further down the staircase. I follow him, sticking cl close to him in case anything goes wrong. Oh! He makes it to the bottom of the steps just as Vincent opens the door of our newest guest and a couple of servants who trail behind him. This is an interesting looking character. This guest is a woman with an elaborate dress that seems to be on the gaudy side. Her face is caked with makeup, but she wears an excessive amount of jewelry. There is no doubt that she has spent an inc 
Empra and Anne spent Anne Anne incredible amount of wealth on her wardrobe. It's all a bit much for me, but what do I know? I'm not rich, and even if I was was, I probably wouldn't spend a lot of money on fancy clothes. Because of my upbringing, I tend to like more practical things. The woman, Lady Rosalind, I'm guessing with a high probability of being correct, smiles, and though I don't know her well enough to judge accurately, it seems a bit forced. It's been far too long, dear cousin. Not long enough. I cough, trying to cover up Lord Sandor's words. Apologies. Lord Lady Rosalind spares me a displeased glance, but turns her attention back to Lord Sandor almost instantly. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. It's good to see you too. I want to tell him that he's not very convincing when he's frowning like that, but I know he's definitely not the time. To, it's definitely now is definitely not the time to mention it. You don't look well. Is it really true what they're saying? Depends on what exactly they're saying, I suppose. That you they say you're dying. Straight to the point, huh? Straight to the point, huh? I suppose there's not much point in lying if you already know that much. Yes, I am dying. That is what the doctors have told me anyway. Why didn't you write to me? To think that I had to find out second hand. I want to live out the rest of my life in peace and quiet, you know, not have family members come pester me over who will be inheriting my who will be inheriting my fortune. That's a pretty blunt way to put it. She'd have to be completely oblivious to Mrs. Meaning. Still, she blinks and pretends that she hasn't offended her in any way. I believe it to be a conscious choice on her part. Oh, but that's just silly, dear cousin. Your family loves you, and yes, we're concerned about what will happen when you're gone, but our primary concern is you. You simply must allow us to be by your side through this troubling time. Lord Sandor rolls his eyes. I imagine you've already brought your things. Yes, that's absolutely right. I wasn't going to accept no as an answer. I'm staying as close as possible while you deal with this horrible illness. Should the worst happen, I'd want to know whether that I was there for you in your final moments. Right. Marcel, go to the garden get Kamal. I want you both to take Lady Rosalind's things up one of the empty guest rooms on the second floor. Don't worry about my things. I can have my servants figure that out. I insist. Oh, very well. Then I'll let your servants handle it. It's a good thing I, my strength has been going up. I wonder if Lord Sander is doing this to punish me for earlier. Then again, if that were the case, he'd probably make me do it by myself. Maybe he just doesn't want her servants wandering around the mansion unsupervised. You heard her. Get going. I bow quickly and then leave the room. I head to the garden as requested and find Kamal watering the plants. He sees me and gives me a small nod, acknowledging my presence. Lord Sander wants us to move one of our guest's luggage into one of the empty guest rooms. Which, which guest? Lady Rosalind. Ah, then yes, I will be needed. He sets, apparently she brings a lot of stuff. I'm not surprised. He sets his watering can down and passes by me, giving me a pat on the shoulder as he heads towards the door. Let's go. I follow his lead and together we make our way to the front of the mansion. Lady Rosalind's carriage is parked there and resting on the ground nearby are a couple of large trunks and several smaller bags. It looks like she's planning on moving in before Lord Sander even kicks the bucket. Does she bring this much stuff all the time? Yes. Kamal goes on to one of the larger trunks and bends over to pick it up. He lifts it from the bottom, attempting to get a good grip on it, a task that is easier said than done. I'll help, hold on. It's heavier than it looks. It'll be fine. Before Kamal can object further, I circle around the other side of the trunk and lift. What? What? My strength? I was... I was off by one. Oh my gosh. I was off by one. Really? Unfortunately, I'm not able to get it a few inches off the ground before I drop it. I don't believe this. I was off by one. Oh, this is so horrible. It slams against the ground and I can swear I hear something break. Kamal frowns and I blush brightly in embarrassment. That didn't, that didn't sound good at all. Kamal puts the trunk down and opens it. I am pretty sure we're not supposed to do that. It'll be fine if we don't get caught. That doesn't exactly comfort me. He looks it over and once he's satisfied, closes the trunk. I'm extremely thankful that no one stepped outside and came across us in the act. How did, there's like virtually no way you can get this done perfectly on the first try. I guess that's why multiple playthroughs, it's replayability and all that. It's still a little annoying. It sounded bad, but I don't think you actually broke anything. I let out a sigh of relief. I'm not, still not sure we should have checked. 
But I'm happy to know that I didn't just give Lord Sander an excuse to fire me. Thanks, Kamal. Yeah, let me handle this one, okay? You can get one or two of the smaller ones. Yeah, no problem. I learned my lesson. I was off by one! Since I'm no longer trying to lift the larger trunks, the rest of the moving goes smoothly. Kamal and I have to make multiple trips, but eventually we're able to get everything up to the room. That done, we head back downstairs. What now? Should we check in with Vincent and see if he has another task for us? I'm going back to the garden. Vincent doesn't really like having me indoors when we have guests. Really? Why is that? It's I'm not nice. You seem pretty nice to me. A bit blunt, maybe, but nice enough. You don't automatically assume you're better than me, so we don't have a problem. Most of Lord Sandor's guests do. You don't have that problem with Lord Sandor? No. He doesn't treat me like dirt. He treats... He treats me like dirt. Kamal smiles. Maybe you deserve it. I hit him lightly on the arm, more in jest than an actual irritation than I know he's just teasing me. I do not. Kamal shrugs. I don't know why then. Figures, I know it's not just me that Lord Sander treats like dirt though. Why else would so many servants have come and gone? Maybe Lord Sander respects Kamal for his history in the arena. Then again, I guess my situation isn't as bad as I'm making it sound. He is rude, but I'm rude right back, so it might just be a result of that. No, I'm pretty sure he's just rude. Still, he hasn't fired me or anything yet, even though I have given him a reason or two to do so. Whatever, I need to stop whining and deal with it. If I ever get really bad, if it ever gets really bad, I can just quit. You coming? To the garden? Yes. I think I'll go see if Vincent needs help with anything else. If he doesn't, then I'll help you out. You don't have that much left to do anyway, right? Right. Then that's my plan. Sounds good. He nods and heads off towards the garden. I look for Vincent. When I find him, he assigns me several small tasks before it's time for me to head back to my room for the day. Ugh. And all that work to try to get my charisma and education up. And I should have gotten my strength up to 20. It's a hot day today, and as such, is one of the few days I'd rather spend indoors. But I have to clean the outdoor windows. I swipe the sweat off of my forehead and continue the assigned job, trying to focus on how close I am to not finish to finishing. After this, I think I can persuade Vincent to assign me to something and uh, something inside. In charge of in charge of washing windows today, Marcel. I look down from my place on the ladder to see Borges. Huh? Oh, hi, Borges. And yeah, I'm about done. Excellent. I could use your help with something. My help? Yes. His excited expression turns into a frown as he thinks of a complication. As, as he thinks of a complication. Ah, uh, but I suppose I should ask Vincent for permission to borrow you. Hold on, I'll be right back. Bordis enters Lord Sandra's mansion on a mission. I honestly don't know what he's so energetic about. I guess I'd better finish cleaning this window before he gets back in case he really does get to pry me away from my work. The task is completed a short while later, and I even end up having a few seconds to check my work before Bordis returns. I talked with Vincent, and he said it was okay. All right, but what exactly do you need me to do? Uh, I didn't explain that, did I? Sorry, I guess I got ahead of myself. I'd like you to be my assistant for a day. You want me to be your assistant? With Lord Sandor? I'm okay with it, but that doesn't mean I'll know what I'm doing. That's fine. I'm not planning to ask you to do anything complicated. You see, I got a letter from an acquaintance named Shagala yesterday. She wasn't able to provide me with a definite cure, but she did mention something that sounded promising. There is a tribe of nomads that inhabit an area south of here, and they have this potion that is supposed to work as a powerful cure-all. Okay. I cross my arms. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I know Bord is excited, but I have to ask, where's the catch? I mean, if something like that really exists, then why isn't it used all the time? Bord just frowns. Well, it's not actually made for human consumption. The tribe I was talking about, well, they're Nagas that have developed a tolerance for the potion's particular side effects over the years. Nagas are pretty different from human sporges. No, not as much as you'd think. A lot of our medicine works on them and vice versa. Besides, this wouldn't be some random experiment. There have been a few accounts of people taking the potion and it has proven effective in most cases. Marcel, I promise that I've looked into the possible complications and I haven't found anything that leads me to believe that this isn't worth a try. Okay, fine. Dropping that issue, what would? What about the side effects you mentioned? Bored is just uncomfortably. Uh, that. Drinking the potion is supposed to make the user feel like they're on fire. The potion itself won't kill anyone, but the shock from that sensation can. 
And you think, and you think having Lord Sander take this potion is a good idea in his condition? I might need to talk to Borges out of this. It doesn't sound like he's thought this through as though as much as he should have. I know how it sounds, but hear me out. While the potion is taking its effect, it'll be using mag I'll be using magic to counteract the burning sensation. If I can keep that aspect of it under control, the potion might be able to cure the Lord, Lord cure Lord Sandor. Borges, that sounds like a big if. I know it does, but it's is worth a try. Trust me, Marcel. Trust him? It's a simple request, but Borges is asking a lot from me. I'm not exactly the type of person that puts a lot of faith in others. I like Borges, but liking someone isn't the same as trusting them. And I don't know, that plan sounds like it has a few issues to me. Then again, I'm not the doctor. If Borges thinks it'll work, who am I to doubt him? Well, whatever I'm thinking, I need to decide in response now. Borges expects some kind of answer. All right, Borges, I trust you. Honestly, I'm still a bit uneasy, but I'm going to try and believe in Borges. I know Borges is desperate, but I also don't think he tries something without considering the worst-case scenarios. He's probably thought about it more than I'm giving him credit for. If it helps Lord Sandor, then it'll be worth it. If it doesn't, well, nothing else was working either. I sigh, relaxing. Thinking over has made me a bit more confident in my choice. Thank you, Marcel. I know you're smart enough to have your doubts, but thank you for believing in me anyway. There's not really anything to thank me for. Okay, my relationship with Borges is going up. Modest as always. I'm not modest. Borges smiles teasingly. I disagree. Ugh, I'm not here to fight you. Let's give this potion a thing a try and get it over with already. I just hope we're not making a huge mistake. We're not. I have a really good feeling about this. Well, let's go see if that feeling is misplaced or not, I guess. I don't know, I have a pretty bad feeling of it just because we still have so many more weeks left in the game. Yes, let's. Borges and I get a bucket of ice water and a cloth before heading towards Lord Sandor's room. I'll have to focus on my magic, so I need so if I need anything, I'll be counting on you to follow my directions, okay? Alright, I think I can do that. Good. As for the bucket of ice water, it looks like the burning sensation is getting out of hand. Try try if it looks like the burning sensation is getting out of hand. Try using some make it to calm Lord Sandor down. Got it. Borges just nods and refocuses to reach the door. Borges just knocks. It's Borges, your lordship. Come in then and be done with it. Borges opens the door and both of us step into the room. Lord Sandor's grumpy expression turns into a surprise one when his eyes fall on me. He resumes his normal angry expression before addressing Borges. You brought Marcel along? Yes, he's going to act as my assistant. You could, all, you could use Vincent for that just as easily. Vincent is busy enough managing your other servants. And if you need another reason for my choice, Vincent and I have a strained relationship at best thanks to his loyalty to you. I am much more comfortable working with Marcel. I didn't realize they had a strained relationship. If Borges was picking an assistant from the people he was comfortable with, shouldn't he have chosen Rene? I imagine Rene in the role briefly before realizing why that'd be a terrible idea. Fine. He sounds really grumpy. I know I shouldn't care, but I'm wondering what exactly is so bad about me being Borges' assistant. You're trying something different today, then. I suppose that is why you'd recruit an assistant. I trust you're not pulling one of my servants away from work for no reason. You're right. Today we're going to try a potion. No invasive surgeries or relentless poking and prodding this time? No, but... It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, isn't it? Yes. You're more of a demon than a doctor, you know that? As you've told me many times, I speak up as Lord Sandor attempts to make another cutting remark. Enough! Borges frowns, a worried creasing, crease forming in his brow. He probably thinks I'll get in trouble for that remark. Instead, Lord Sandor looks my way briefly before sighing and turning his attention back to Borges. Fine. Borges blinks in surprise. Oh, no, go back. Go back! That's all the arguing you plan on doing today? It wouldn't stop you anyway. You're right about that much. This isn't the best lead I've had in a time. This is the best lead I've had in a long time. I'm not willing to pass up this chance. Do as you will, then. Before we begin, I should go over what to expect. The potion, I don't need to know. Just do your job. Borges nods and produces a small vial of red liquid from his medical bag. He takes off the lid and hands it over to Lord Sandor. I bet it tastes horrible, too. Borges frowns, but Lord Sandor does tip the vial's contents into his mouth and swallows. He winces and Borges moves forward and starts casting his spell. Lord Sanders tries to relax against the bed, but even with Borges' magic, he's clearly uncomfortable. 
After a few minutes, he begins to sweat, and I dip the cloth from earlier in the cold water and dab at his forehead. 